is Bernadette Mugita from Kenya. My title is Infant Feeding Challenges Encountered by HIV Positive Mothers in Korogosho Slums, Nairobi, Kenya. And I am the author. So my introduction, the epidemic of mother to child transmission of human immunodeficiency virus in resource poor countries is dramatic and is Sorry for interruption. And is getting echoed. Your voice is getting echo. Um, and so, sorry? It's getting back again twice. Can you hear me now? Uh, now it's okay. You proceed now. Okay, the introduction of my research is that the epidemic of mother to child transmission of human immunodeficiency virus in resource poor countries is dramatic and is responsible for nearly 90% of childhood infections. According to UNAIDS, update from 2014, there are about 34 million people living with HIV worldwide. Sub Saharan Africa still bears the largest share of the global HIV burdens, as 68% of those living with HIV live in Sub Saharan Africa, and all, more women than men are HIV positive. Breastfeeding carries significant health benefits to infants and young children. And for several decades, the promotion of exclusive breastfeeding in resource poor settings has played a critical role in improving child health by providing optimal nutrition and protection against childhood infection. Unfortunately, the documentation of the risk of HIV transmission through mothers milk has rendered infant feeding choices a most exigent issue and has created considerable uncertainty and fear among HIV positive childbearing women. The HIV epidemic has challenged health system and public health programs throughout the world. Balancing the risk of HIV transmission during breastfeeding with the risk of non breastfeeding in settings where access to safe replacement foods, healthcare and support are limited is one of the most difficult issues facing HIV affected families today. This has resulted in a painful dilemma for millions of women in developing countries, especially those in resource poor settings, for whom there are no easy options. For HIV positive women in well resourced countries, the advice from national health agencies is to avoid breastfeeding altogether because the risk of HIV transmission far outweighs the risk associated with replacement feeding. However, in Korogosho slum, which is resource poor, where access to safe replacement foods, healthcare, and support are limited, and where infections, diseases, and malnutrition are the major causes of childhood death, replacement feeding can be much more hazardous. Balancing the risk of HIV transmission during breastfeeding with the risk of not breastfeeding is one of the most difficult issues facing HIV affected families in this land. This has resulted in a painful dilemma. This study explored HIV positive women's infant feeding challenges encountered in trying to implement their feeding of choice in the social and cultural context of a slum in Nairobi called Korogosho. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. change the slide, but no, no, no. See, in that in that bottom, you have the this left and right arrow. I mean, up and down arrow mark oh. is there. If you click that, it will. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. The summary: the research has shown that HIV positive mothers in Korogosho slums are faced with multiple infant feeding challenges, such as challenges of acquiring knowledge on appropriate feeding. Mothers are awareness of MTCT through breastfeeding, challenges of exclusive breastfeeding and replacement feeding, and lastly challenges of early and abrupt cessation. Why this study? The current point of recommendations are that HIV positive mothers
the current World Health recommends for that heteropolitic mothers should exclusively breastfeed following by alicization or replacement if they can meet a first criteria for replacement feeding. However, it seems that many mothers in Korobosho are share, having problems in following these guidelines as poor infant feeding practices have been documented. This study therefore aimed at finding out from the mothers the challenges that they face in acquiring knowledge on appropriate infant feeding, challenges of exclusive breastfeeding, early breastfeeding, cessation and replacement. This findings will help in strengthening the information, education and communication material used in PMTCT program, programs. The findings will also assist or help in informing policies that will target the community on PMTCT through breastfeeding. Uh, this study was a cross-sectional study a descriptive cross-sectional study design with quantitative closed-ended questions and quantitative approach with open-ended questions in primary data collection. Structured questionnaires, social demographic indices, challenges of acquiring knowledge on appropriate impact feeding methods and challenges encountered by the exclusive breastfeeding mothers, replacement feeding mothers, and those who had ceased breastfeeding. The study subjects were enrolled from a target population of 140 HIV positive mothers who attended a postnatal clinic with children aged 6 weeks to 6 months enrolled in the Karyobangi Health Center PMTCT program. Uh, the, results, the results of this study, the respondents aged 20 from 15 to 37 with a mean age of 25 years the age of the infant ranged from six weeks to six months. There were 103 respondents out of these majority of mothers, 100 of them which contributed to 97.1% reported having attended NC clinic. However, only 42 women reported to have attended more than once. Out of the 103 women, more uh, nine None said that they had not received any counseling on feeding after breastfeeding cessation, nor had they received maternal nutrition during breastfeeding or education on good breastfeeding techniques. Most of mothers, amounting to 57, which is 53%, say that they never fully understood the infant feeding, counseling, giving various reasons, which included not understanding, saying they received the counseling immediately after obtaining their HIV positive results and therefore they were not ready to, to, to be counseled on alternative, on, on, on alternative feeding. Some say that the sessions were too few and nine women say that the counselors were unfriendly and therefore they could not facilitate any education to them. Uh, the results also indicated that mothers' educational levels seem to have an influence on their understanding on infant feeding, on infant feeding counseling, and this understanding was higher among mothers in secondary or tertiary education. Therefore, the mothers who had some little education also attended the NC clinic as compared to mothers who did not have any education background or who had not gone to school. Mother's awareness of maternal child transmission of HIV was generally good among the study participants. Those are mothers had no idea at all about MTC timing and preventions. And some of the challenges with exclusive breastfeeding that were cited by these mothers included 29 of them said it was due to failure to produce enough milk. 23 of the women said that it, uh, it was due to the infection in the baby's mouth and that's why they could not breastfeed. 19 of them said that it was due to breast infections. 9 of them cited that inability to control feeding. And 6 of them 
so that they had to leave their babies to go back to work. The main challenge encountered by HIV positive mothers who had ceased breastfeeding early were lack of advice on feeding after breastfeeding cessation and criticism from both relatives and friends. So the conclusion of this research is that the main challenge encountered by HIV positive mothers in acquiring knowledge and appropriate infant feeding methods was poor clinic attendance. The challenges encountered by breastfeeding mothers were inability to produce enough milk, infection in the baby's mouth, and breast infections. The main challenge encountered by HIV positive mothers who had ceased breastfeeding early were lack of advice on feeding after breastfeeding cessation. The conclusion is that no emphasis should be put on encouraging the mothers to start antenatal clinic attendance early at the recommended time. No effort should be put to enhance the mother's awareness on the association between breastfeeding and maternal to child transmission of HIV. Provision of information on appropriate infant feeding practices after cessation of breastfeeding should be enhanced. And lastly, further investigations are required to determine the cause of insufficient milk production by mothers. Future steps is to ensure that more emphasis is put on encouraging the mothers to attend the antenatal clinic. More effort should be put to enhance mothers' awareness on the association of breastfeeding and MTCT of HIV transmission and to ensure more detailed counseling to be done to the mothers on all aspects of breastfeeding and replacement feeding as this will help them solve the common infant feeding problems. Further steps to investigate the causes of insufficient milk apart from the stresses and lack of food should also be investigated. Thank you.